Dear viewers, it's with a heavy heart that I have to inform you of the sad news that the end is nigh for the humble rim break. The last defender of the rim break, Team Ineos Grenadiers, have today confirmed they are switching to disc brakes for the first time ever. The rim brake though has had a good innings. It's been around for well over 100 years, but the future it seems is all about disc brakes. Yes, that's right. Team Ineos Grenadiers have finally announced they'll be racing a professional road race with disc brakes, lining up at a small French road race today on disc brakes ahead of Paris-Roubaix in a couple of weekends time. Big news and it's gone down as you would expect on the internet with jubilation in one corner and wailing and tears in the other corner. And the cycling media, well, they basically announced it as confirmation the team are finally making a switch wholesale from rim brakes to disc brakes. But personally, I'll wait until I see the team lining up at a Tour de France next summer on disc brakes before I take this as confirmation the team are finally switching over for good to disc brakes. The reason I'm holding reservation on whether the team are finally making a switch for good from rim brakes to disc brakes is because the team, as we all know, are super obsessed with weight. We've seen them using uber expensive and uber lightweight wheels from German company Lightweight at the Tour de France and other bike races where weight really matters to try and bring the weight of the Dogma F12 down as low as possible on the scales down to that UCI 6.8 kilogram weight to limit. So weight has always been an issue for them, but now they're switching over to the Dogma F as confirmed in that social media post. And that frame or the bike is lighter than the old Dogma F12, although the frame weight's about the same, 850, 860 grams, but the headset, the fork, the handlebar and the seat clamp assembly is all much lighter by about 260 grams. So maybe the weight savings made on that platform have enabled them to finally make the switch to disc brakes without a weight penalty that we were worried about before. So maybe the weight savings on that frame are the reason behind this new apparent change in tune towards disc brakes. But why are they switching over to disc brakes now, this late in the season, at a small French road race that many of us have never heard before, and at Paris-Roubaix? Well, Paris-Roubaix, with its 55 kilometers or thereabouts of cobbles, is a flat race and been dry for the last decade or so, but it's always been put forward as a perfect test case for disc brakes which sort of makes no sense because the race is flat, it's high speed, there's no real descending, there's no real braking requirements. But on the flip side, if the race was wet, which it hasn't been for 10 plus years, those wet conditions and mud and the grime would be the perfect example for disc brakes to really shine. And even when it's dry, the risk of punctures is really high from stones and grit getting jammed between the tire and the rim brake caliper. So remove that rim brake caliper, get more clearance between the rubber and the frame, run bigger tires and there's less risk of punctures. And then there's a the subject of wheel changes, of course, and we've seen some really shoddy wheel changes with disc brakes in the last couple of years. But it's worth adding that I've seen some really bad wheel changes with rim brakes over the last couple of decades of watching this sport. So the problem isn't just around disc brakes, it's also there with rim brakes. It's just made a little bit trickier with disc brakes. I think part of the problem is down to the fact that teams clearly aren't paying enough attention to wheel changes in the race. And hopefully Team Ineos Grenadiers will apply their usual marginal gains approach to everything they do in road racing and really prep and prepare and analyze how to efficiently and quickly change a wheel in the white heat of a road race and not have the uh, drama we have seen in some races, uh, quite high profile races this season. The cycling teams could definitely take a leaf out of F1 with how it practices and prepares for quick wheel changes. Interestingly, in some of the press statements accompanying the announcement of the move to disc brakes, the team does allude to the fact it's made some improvements in the quick release system on the bike. Now, I don't know what this is. The photos just show a normal through axle with an Allen bolt on the end, no lever or anything special like that. So I don't know what these improvements are, but that's a really fascinating insight I'll be watching the race and Paris Bay very closely to see what these improvements actually are. There are already better systems on the market that are quicker and easier to change a wheel than the regular through axle where you totally undo the lever and take it out of the frame and fork. There's a the Mavic speed release and there's the Focus RAT, which is short for rapid axle technology. And both of those are similar in that rather than totally remove the axle from the frame and fork, you just undo it like a quick release and then the frame 
allows the wheel to be dropped out more easily and more quickly. So I can't wait to see what Team Ineos Grand Deer have developed because the Dogma F doesn't employ IRO systems, use a normal 12 mm seraxial front and rear. So what they develop will be interesting to see. By this stage in the video, there are bound to be a few interesting conspiracy theories down in the comment section and I can't wait to read them afterwards. But the usual stuff around them being forced by the brands and manufacturers sponsoring them. So Shimano, Pinarello, the big disc brake corporation, those evil, evil people. But here's the thing, the new Pinarello Dogma F is available with rim brakes or disc brakes, while the brand new Shimano Durace DIT group set is available with rim brakes or disc brakes. So a team could, if they wanted, stick with rim brakes for many more years to come. And if they were gonna be forced by the big evil corporations, they could, would have made a switch years ago like many other teams did. But maybe the fact they haven't used disc brakes up until now is because the team felt the technology wasn't where it needed to be, especially around weight. But now the new Dogma F, that new Shimano group set, they've done testing behind the scenes that we haven't seen. And the riders, the team personnel have decided the technology is now where it needs to be, that they are confident they can make the switch from rim brakes to disc brakes. The main reason they've been holding out it's not they hate disc brakes, the fact they felt the disc brakes weren't at a good place for them to make the switch, but now it is, and they have made a switch. But interestingly, on the group set front, the photos shown on social media at least show the current generation R9100 Durace DIT group set, and not the brand new R9200 that was released a few weeks ago. Maybe they actually line up at the road race with the new group set, but the photos show the old group set, which is odd, which is quite telling, if Shimano can't even supply the bigger team in pro cycling with the brand new group set and shows how bad the supply issues are. Because I would have thought if a team were making a switch of disc brakes, they would have wanted a new disc brake technology from that new Dura group set with increased clearance and a servo wave technology, which brings on paper quite big improvements in terms of performance over the current stuff. So that's a bit odd, but maybe a line up with the new group set so I'll be watching very closely to see what they're actually using when they do take to the start line. And is there something else new on this bike hiding in the shadows as well? Is this a brand new Continental GP5000 tire on show as well? So it looks like a 5000 tire on a dual race carbon rim. And as you know, the team usually use tubular tires, tires that are glued onto the rims, but the Continental GP5000 isn't available as a tub tire. So will the team not only making a switch from rim brakes to disc brakes, but also make the switch from tubular tires to clincher tires with inner tubes, or maybe even tubeless tires. Maybe they're making a wholesale switch to the latest technology in one fell swoop. Paris Bay with cobbles is a perfect race for tubers, and we've seen tubers being used at the race before with inserts or without inserts to give a punch of benefits you want at the race. And if this is a new 5000, 5000S, or 6000, or whatever it be called, will it be compatible with hookless? I'd expect it to be, because most wheel brands are going down a hookless route. Zip, MV, Hunt, and many others are going down the hookless route. And many of the new tires are designed to the latest ETRTO standards, which are compatible with hookless, like Prelli, uh, Michelin, Goodyear, many other Riga tires that are compatible with hookless. And the new, well, the current 5000 isn't compatible with hookless, and it's a good tire, but many of you might have used it and found it to be a bit of an installation pig, so it's not my favorite tire on that front. These newer breed of tires, which are designed to later standards, are much easier to use, make life much easier. So hopefully the new Continental GP5000, S6000, whatever it's gonna be called, takes um, these new ETR guidelines to heart and design with hookless in mind as well as a better tuber tire. So there we go then. Team Ineos Grandier doing something many of us never thought we'd ever see. Switching from rim brakes to disc brakes. And I'll be watching the race very closely to see how they get on. But do let me know what you think of this switch. Are you behind it? Are you against it? I'd love to hear your thoughts as always. And if you want to know more about the latest Dura DR2 group set and improvements on this disc brakes, then click on this video linked up above there and subscribe by hitting that button just there. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.